Hello, I'm The Great Orbax, and welcome to today's Real or Unreal, where we'll be discussing the science of Ghostbusters. Back off, man, I'm a scientist. But you're forgetting, I was an undersea unexplained mass sponge migration. <laughs> so the science behind ghost busting is um, problematic. You see, all of it depends on this fact that we live in a world where there's ghosts. Now, whether or not that may be the case, we can look at the logistic structure of the movie and discuss the concepts that are within that whole setup. So in Ghostbusters the movie, we have something called PKE or psychokinetic energy, which as far as we know, doesn't exist. However, within the movie it does. And in the case of psychokinetic energy, psychokinetic energy has the ability to ionize atoms, basically giving them an extra electron or stripping a proton off them so they have a negative charge. That means that ghosts in the movie Ghostbusters are basically amalgams of negative charge distributions, which is why you can pick them up on these EMF readers or a PKE reader as they call them in the movie. So that's a basis for some of the science that's involved in ghost busting. How do you bust a ghost if it's just a bunch of negative charge? Well, in the case of negative charge, we need to have a large source of positive charge to balance it off and to get rid of all of that negative charge, call that the charge balance. And that's actually how a lot of interactions in nature work. Uh, we're trying to minimize excess charge here or there. So what do we do? Well, clearly the easiest way to do this is by creating an unlicensed nuclear accelerator in the form of a proton pack. A proton pack could be one of a couple things. In the 1984 movie, the proton pack was a cyclotron. And in the 2016 movie, it was a synchrotron. So what are those things? Well, those are basically particle accelerators. Um, they're devices that are used to bring protons, which is a hydrogen atom that's been stripped of its electrons, up to a very, very, very fast speed. So enter the cyclotron. The cyclotron is a sequence of, uh, I mean, this is almost a question that you would do in first year physics. A proton enters a region where there's a positive charge and a negative charge. The proton itself, positively charged, is repelled by the positively charged field and approaches the negatively charged field. It then goes inside of something called a D, where it experiences a magnetic field which actually bends it and causes it to curve. The curvature in its path comes back out the other way where a fluctuating electric field now switches the polarities and it's shot across accelerating the other way where it enters another magnetic field which bends it around and it spirals around and around and around and around like that until it reaches a very high acceleration and is ejected from the cyclotron. Synchrotron works in a very similar way, but it uses alternating magnetic fields that are synchronized to the motion of that proton to actually make it accelerate very, very quickly. Now, presumably we attach this to a hose and a gun and you can shoot this out at ghosts. But what it does give you is it gives you this idea of you have a stream of protons, a stream of positive charges that are being shot at this negatively charged amalgam, which we consider to be a ghost that neutralizes the charge and makes the ghost possible to trap. Have you ever felt a ghost-like presence when walking in a spooky, long, dark corridor? Well, perhaps it's not ghosts. Perhaps it's infrasonics. There's been a lot of work done by NASA about the organs of the human body and how they respond to vibration. And it was actually found that right around 19 hertz is where a lot of the organs of your body actually experience acoustic resonance and vibrate. So your stomach organs, well, your, the organs of your stomach will vibrate. You'll start to feel sweaty. You'll start to feel uneasy. And it's actually right in around 20 hertz or 19 hertz that your eyes also vibrate. And oscillations of the eyes can cause these strange things like visions. So the question would be, are you in the presence of ghosts and having a panic attack or is acoustic energy creating the same effects of a panic attack that your mind interprets as being a ghost. Infrasonics and these low frequency oscillations come a lot from industry and industrial machines and large moving machines that move regularly. If we look at turn of the century England during the modern revolution of engineering and industry, we start to see the most ghosts appearing in these tunnels that occur all underneath where all these factories are now running 
steam engines, machinery, and things like that that didn't exist before. Those vibrations could possibly be setting up standing waves in all of these areas. And on top of that, not everybody is affected by infrasonic waves. Only a few people can actually feel that. And it's exactly the same experience you have when you go on a ghost walk and one or two of the people feel something strange or bizarre. Perhaps they're just having that acoustic wave coupled to them.